All right, so what is up guys? In this video, I want to show you how to use async and await in Kotlin coroutines. So let's get started immediately by creating a few suspend functions. So the first suspend function I want to create is going to be one called add numbers, and it's going to take two numbers of type int, and it is going to return an int. And inside here, we want to pretend it's computing something. So we will add a delay of 2000 milliseconds, and then we will return the sum of n plus n2. And that will take care of our first suspend function. Then we will just copy and paste this one because we are going to create something that's essentially the same. And this one is going to be called multiply numbers. And it will take the same parameters and return an int again. But this time we are going to give it a delay of 2500 to pretend it is taking a bit longer to compute. And we will replace this addition operator with the multiplication operator. Then we can go to our function main and to make things simple, we're going to turn this into a ROM blocking block so that we can use coroutines and suspend functions inside here without having to create a new scope. And the first thing we want to do is create a value which is called time. And this is going to measure how long this operation will take just to show you that async actually works at the same time and not sequentially. So the next thing to be done is to create two values. The first value is going to be value sum. And instead of writing launch, we are going to write async. And inside async, we can call our suspend function add numbers. And we are going to add the number 10 plus 12, something simple. And that will take care of that. Then we can go ahead and create value products for our multiplication and also call async again. And here we will write multiply numbers. And inside here, we will do 20 times two. So it's a very simple computation. And let's go ahead and create a log. And inside this log, we are going to write the sum of add numbers is and then we need to interpolate and add a pair of curly brackets and then write sum dot await. So this await function actually waits for this to be computed before it inserts the sum. So it will not be used unless this has actually been computed. And if you call it without the wait, you'll see that the computation might have been started, but it won't give you the correct sum. It will just say something weird like waiting for job. Let's put back the dot await and let's continue with this log. And then after we'll write and the product of multiply numbers is, and we will do the same thing as before and insert products dot await. Now, the cool thing about this is that it will wait for both this and this before it even tries to log this statement. So that's a very neat thing you can do if you have to wait for two different requests. And then at the bottom, we are going to log and say completed in time MS. So that will tell us exactly how long this operation took. And in theory, since this takes two seconds and this takes 2.5 seconds, the entire operation should take around 2.5 seconds. But let's make sure this actually does this by going ahead and clicking on run. So here you can see it's taking a 2.5 second delay before it tells us that the sum of the addition problem is 22 and the product of the multiply numbers is 40. And it was completed in 2,563 milliseconds, which is more or less what we were looking for. Now, earlier I told you that this was neat because it waited for both of the requests to be computed before it actually printed it to the console. Now, this is partially true because the way we wrote it here could definitely lead to some errors and bugs in our program if not handled correctly. As you can see here, we created two different asyncs that are calculated independently, which means if this decides to return an error and this decides to not return an error, we will definitely find a bug in our program because it will not be able to compute what we required it to compute. Now, a way to get around this is to actually create another suspend function, or it doesn't have to be a suspend function, but bear with me, private suspend function. We will call this do both operations and we will create a coroutine scope. And the point of this was to help you by creating a safety mechanism for the code that you want to launch in coroutines, because let's pretend that this product async function actually turns out to be all wonky and it creates a lot of bugs or even returns an error. Instead of affecting a large portion of your program, it will just affect everything in this coroutine scope and it will cancel it. So it's a lot better when you can specify the code in separate coroutine scopes because 
it will give you a lot more to work with in the future and it will save you a lot of trouble when it comes to debugging and errors and exceptions. And on top of that, we can just go back to our main function and call do both operations. And it's simple as that, except this time it will be a whole new coroutine scope, which means if anything here goes wrong, all of these will be cancelled. But of course, remember to wrap this in try and catch in case it might introduce some exceptions. Now there's actually one more thing I want to show you in this video. So let's delete all of this code and I'm just going to copy and paste in some other code. So here we have a private suspend function that says network request and it returns a string. And inside the first thing that happens is we create a repeat block that gets delayed 1000 milliseconds and then prints out making network request three times. Then we decided to include a delay of 2000 milliseconds before it returns the string network request successful. Now what I want to show you here is how to lazily start this. Now pretend this block is useless until the user decides to actually click on a button that requires this functionality. So let's go ahead and create value network request and that's going to still be a asynchronous call. And instead of just calling async, we can go and add a constructor. And inside here, we can add as a parameter, a start method. So inside here, we will type in start equals and we will write coroutine start dot lazy, which means none of this will be computed until the request is made. So inside here, let's go ahead and type in network request. And one way to start this is actually to call network request dot start and then it will make the computation as this gets called. And that's all you have to do to get the value from here. But another thing you can do as we did earlier is to type in log and type in network request, the value that we have created and call dot await. And this will start the network request under the hood and it will give us the value when we log the statement. And when we go ahead and click on play, and as you can see, it printed out everything just as it would have earlier, even without this coroutine start.lazy. But this gives us the option to use it later when we actually need it. And that's actually all I wanted to cover in this async and await tutorial. So with that being said, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.